The patella tendon bearing cast, or PTB, is usually applied as the last stage of treatment for tibial fractures. The pressure applied to the fracture site as the patient walks stimulates bone growth. The PTB may also be used for rehabilitation of the knee for a patient whose leg has been immobilized by a long leg cast. In this presentation, the application of the PTB will be demonstrated. The objective of the exercise is to show the application of the PTB, a plaster cast that will stabilize the fracture while stimulating bone growth. The PTB is indicated as the final stage of treatment for tibial fractures and for rehabilitation of the knee. To apply a PTB, the following materials are needed. A stockinette or tubular gauze bandage, cotton wool for undercast padding, scissors, plaster of Paris bandages in rolls of varying widths, Plaster slabs, generally five layers thick and available in differing widths. A walking rubber and water or another wetting agent. The water should be tepid or lukewarm with an ideal temperature of between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius. It should be noted that colder water or a bandage that is wetter will allow for an increased working time while warmer water or a bandage that is drier reduces the working time. The patient should be seated with the knee over the edge of the table. The foot is supported at the metatarsals with the knee, as shown here. The patient's knee should be slightly flexed, while both the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscles should be relaxed. The foot should be plantigrade, and the second toe should be in line with the tibia to prevent inversion or eversion of the foot. The distal border is located at the metatarsal heads. The toes should remain uncovered. The anterior proximal border of the PTB lies above the patella. The posterior landmark is two fingers below the popliteal crease so that the patient may not bend the knee more than 90 degrees, which would cause rotation. To begin, a stockinette is applied and cut slightly longer than the final cast will be. Starting at the distal border, the cotton wool is gently wound on, once around the foot and then around the ankle in a figure of eight, making sure that the edge does not cut into the 90 degree bend of the ankle. The cotton wool is wound towards the knee, giving an overlap of one centimeter which provides a single layer of padding and ensures a secure fitting cast. A piece of cotton wool is used to pad the patella. It should be kept in mind that when more padding is applied, there will be less support to the injury site. Cotton wool padding is also applied to the heel and over the malleoli to protect against pressure points causing pressure sores. Before the first bandage is wetted, the free end is doubled over to provide additional support for the base of the foot. The plaster bandage is wetted and the excess water is removed. Starting with the bottom of the foot, the plaster bandage is wrapped around the ankle in a figure of eight.
The bandage is wound around the leg towards the knee with a 50% overlap. The end of the second plaster bandage is folded over to form a slab. The bandage is wettened, and the slab is placed over the patella. The bandage is wound down and around to the proximal posterior border, and then upwards and around to the patella. Winding continues towards the foot. and over the heel. Molding begins with one hand applying strong pressure between the heads of the gastrocnemius muscle as shown. The other hand molds plaster around the wings of the tibia. The thumbs are then used to mold around the wings of the patella and the quadriceps implantation area. Downward pressure is applied to the top of the patella with the thumb and forefinger, while the bottom of the patella is supported with the other hand. The stockinette is folded over the proximal edge of the cast. A third plaster bandage is applied in the same manner as the second. It secures the loose end of the stockinette. The plaster is molded to the curve of the tibia, the malleoli, and Achilles tendon. The result will be a secure fitting cast. The extra plaster covering the toes should be noted. It ensures there will be adequate support for the metatarsal heads. The excess plaster is now removed with the scissors and the stockinette at the distal end is cut and folded back to reveal the toes. To allow weight bearing, a walking rubber will now be applied. It can be seen that the flat surface of the walking rubber does not lie securely against the surface of the cast. Therefore, a plaster slab is folded over, wettened, placed in between and molded to ensure the stability of the walking rubber.
The walking rubber is secured to the cast with a plaster bandage. Care is taken to ensure that the weight-bearing walking rubber lies perpendicular to the axis of the tibia and the back of the walking rubber is in line with it. This position will encourage the patient to walk with a rolling movement of the foot rather than by placing the weight on either the heel or toes. The plaster is smoothed. The secure fit of the cast is verified by having the patient attempt to rotate the leg. A secure fitting cast will prevent rotation. Flexion at the knee is also checked. The patient should not be able to flex the knee more than 90 degrees. As the PTB functions as a weight-bearing cast, the patient should be instructed to wait 36 hours before beginning to walk to allow the plaster to set. The exercise for the patient can now be explained and demonstrated. The patient sits with the leg extended, lowers the leg to the point of soreness, holds the leg there for five seconds, and then extends the leg. The exercise should be repeated as necessary to relieve any soreness of the knee. The application of the PTB or patella tendon bearing cast is now complete.